Hey, what's guys? Come back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how to fix this. If you don't know what this is, this is a mini split that is not cooling properly. This specific one happens to be made by Mr. Cool here. And by not cooling properly, what I mean is it's doing this. If you don't know what this means, it means it's icing over and it's cooling a little bit depending on how bad a state yours is in, but it's definitely not cooling properly. So when it ices over like this, what the problem usually comes down to is one of two problems, even potentially both, uh, but usually one of two. Uh, the, there is not enough airflow going through the system to properly get the cold uh, air from the evac coil out, right? Meaning you got caked on dust. A lot of dust is usually okay, but if you got a ton of caked on dust, that would be a problem. But more likely than that, it's gonna be that you're low on Freon. So this is usually a type of thing that you would probably call out to HVAC tech or professional or something like that to really get you help on. Uh, if you're something like in my area or all the people and stuff that you've called have taken probably at least given you one to two week estimates, especially in the heat of summer before they can get out there. And most people know, ain't nobody got no time for that, right? So we're gonna see if we can fix this and I'm gonna show you easy ways on how you can do it yourself. So taking a closer look at this before we go outside, I said this is a 12K Mr. Cool model. And as you can see here, this one is icing over. Um, it's definitely been not cooling super well for a bit, but I can definitely tell it's been icing for a little bit. As you can see here, this one has been installed for a little over three years since we've installed this one from 2022 and we got it from Costco. So three years before, more than three years, three years and you know five months, three and a half years pretty much before it's had any issues whatsoever only thing we've really had to do here was you know just come here and clean out the air filters every month and stuff like that but that's no big issue right so let's go ahead and tell you uh go outside and take a look at it and show you how we're gonna plan to try to fix this all right, so if I haven't mentioned it, the important thing to do is make sure you look on the side of your outdoor unit and look on there to figure out which type of refrigerant you're using. In my case, and in a lot of the Mr. Cool DIY mini split cases, they're all using R410. So a R410 refrigerant, I would say is pretty common to find. Uh, you can get this, but I do want it, uh, you to emphasize a little bit of caution uh, when you do this, mainly because you want to make sure you get uh, the right refrigerant but I do also encourage you to get the one or the bottle that has the UV dye and the sealant, especially if this is your first time doing it. The reason behind that is you can get this bottle in just R410 uh, refrigerant, or you can get it with, I think, only the UV dye, and I know you can get it in only the sealant. This bottle contains all three of them. And if it's your first time doing it, I really encourage you to get all three of them, mainly because it could just be like a microscopic leak, um, and then the sealant would kind of, you know, pretty much fix that. You definitely don't want to dump a huge bottle of sealant into there because it could eventually gum up the compressor. So you want to get one that is mixed. The other benefit to having the refrigerant, the sealant, and the dye mixed together is that if it does leak, you can eventually get a, a UV a little pen light or whatever and try to figure out where it's leaking from yes you're not going to be able to in inspect everything especially if inside a wall or whatnot but you can easily see around the connectors or all the piping that you do have access to uh you can inspect that so i would highly recommend getting the one with all three of them in there and this is the bottle that we're going to use today and before you do any of this i would encourage you to wear gloves just you don't want to get like chemical burns or anything like that and wear pr probably some uh, safety glasses to resist you know like i said safety first right uh the other thing that goes on with this is you need a connector so this is going to be the connector that we use uh if you look on here if i can get it to focus a little bit well on here um what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get this arrow to the blue okay if it's blue which is the r410a right so if you look at this closely enough r410a is this outside if you can see that on here i don't know if you can see it but i can see it r 410 is this outside ring we want to get this arrow to be in the blue uh this blue area which means it's running efficiently or uh running at 
spec or, or operational parameters, right? So uh, this side is going to screw on to this bottle here. And then this side is going to screw on to the uh, port uh, that we're about to open up and go take a look at outside. Um, the other key piece of advice I do want to make sure you take into account is whenever you're doing this, 100% make sure you are in cooling mode and uh, as low as you can get the uh, mini split to go. The really important piece of that information is because it doesn't matter if it's hot outside or cold outside, but it's important because you want the uh, line or the port that you plug this into to be the low pressure side. So not everybody knows this, but a mini split swivel can operate pretty much in forward and reverse pretty much putting out heat or cooling. You want to operate it in cooling mode so that you are not connecting this to high pressure. And we're outside here. And as you can see here, we already have it connected. Uh, if you go outside and you see the frost, as you can see right here on uh, this bigger line here, uh, that's also a tall tale sign of not enough refrigerant. So I've opened it up and then connected it, as you can see right here, not super well, but if you look closely enough, can't, I just can't get it in the right angle with the trees. Um, the arrow is down here. It really should be up to here where the blue area is. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the bottle upside down and I've already, like I said, connected it pretty tight and securely and then try to start filling it up. This may take, depending on how bad your system is or how much you've lost, it may take a bottle or two. So in that case, you may just need to go in our bottle, but let's go ahead and see how this works, right? You go ahead here, and the idea is to do it in small bursts. So let's go ahead here, put this upside down, do a small burst. As you can see how it settles down, it's definitely gone up. Let's try it again. Look at that. We're definitely getting closer, closer to the blue. It's getting eaten alive by mosquitoes out here. Closer. We've emptied the whole bottle. And then now we've literally just barely made it into the blue. The arrow is barely in the blue. So for somebody like me, in my case, I'll probably just end up ordering another one of these bottles um, so I can go ahead and get this going. But um, depending on your system and how bad your system is, I would just recommend maybe ordering two bottles so you don't have to do this two separate times. You could just easily take this off, get uh, another bottle on and just get it all done in one shot instead of me having to wait for the second bottle to come in because i did order two but in two separate orders because i had that thought secondarily saying hey what if one bottle isn't enough right so don't be this guy and just order two it'll probably cost you a little bit more obviously but you know you don't want to have to do this twice at least i don't because i'm just getting eaten alive by mosquitoes out here all right yep that bottle is empty and as you can see here we're in the blue barely so um let me go ahead and back this off the other thing i will note is that as you back this off there will be some loss from uh, this line because this is not a super low loss connection but as you can see here already immediately now this this uh thing i wish i could get this out the way it's not frozen anymore right so the ice has gone away and now the mini split is cooling properly so let's go ahead and quickly get this thing off because you know as you take it off you'll lose some refrigerant but tall tail sign right there problem has been fixed immediately all right and as i have it off i do want to say one thing and i didn't do this first primarily for a reason so one of the common places it could leak is the valve core the schrader core that the schrader valve that's in there uh, it's a common thing. The reason I didn't want to test that first is because I know I'm going to have to put refrigerant in there anyways, all right, killing mosquitoes. Um, and then I didn't want to risk having something on the uh, core or something actually getting pushed into the system because the idea for that is you want to get that clean. So if I were you, I would definitely check to see if there's any leaks there, but I would definitely check after you do it, all right? So I'm going to use this one and no relation to this, these people or whatnot but I found just over the years, this one is just a little bit thicker, which I think helps a little bit. And I put this cap back on here. 
I didn't put it on super tight because I did want to see if anything does leak, you know, we'll see a bubble or something like that. So let's go ahead, put some of this on here. Some of this, put it all up here. Make sure no bubbles are coming out of here. We definitely don't want to see any bubbles. No bubbles that I can tell besides the ones that I'm making. All right, and now we're back inside and as you can see already, the frost is already gone. No frost anywhere on the system so far. So it's literally been probably two minutes from me putting all the stuff up then coming back inside. Let me go grab a thermal imaging camera to see if we can actually see what the difference coming out of here is. I don't know if you can see it. The air coming out of here is about 56, right? 50, but the air going in up here is closer to about 77, 78. So I'm trying to do this with one hand. Air up here, 77, air coming out, 46, 45. Yeah, that's a pretty big delta. There you go. You can, I probably should have showed you that this was a real problem earlier. It was still cooling about 10-ish degrees, but nowhere nearly that effective. Oh, the only reason it cools at that point is because there's ice and this is blowing air over the ice. So uh, it still works a little bit, but if you really wanted to get working effectively or efficiently, then you should do exactly that. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, I'm not sponsored by any of these uh, companies or anything like that. Just wanted to share some information, which would probably help some of y'all, I would imagine. So uh, there's a whole bunch of places you can buy this type of refrigerant stuff. Um, I'll drop some links in the description below if that's what you really want to know where you can get it, but you could probably just Google search it and find something real quick. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Have a good day, get back to work, and we'll see you guys next time.